Go to the next. This is Gert. He's going to talk to us a little bit about reactive PHP. I believe that. Something that I'm not humongously familiar with. Um, but yeah. Must be not. No, no, apparently not. Let's enjoy, guys. Right, hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so uh, my name is Geert van Bommel. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I am the founder of uh, Streambiki. Uh, Streambiki is a service that um, monitors your uh, SQL query result set and then detects changes. And when the changes occur, it sends it as a stream, so an event stream, basically to your consumer. And uh, we try to make consuming it as easy as possible. So, for example, in JavaScript, you can use Event Source. Uh, who here programs in JavaScript? Mm. Yeah, okay. Uh, who programs in PHP? All right, there's a few here. Yeah, so this talk is going to be for you. So, Event Source will also uh, program the PHP version uh, in React PHP, and I'm a sponsor of React PHP. Trimbiki is also built on top of React PHP. And I'm also, uh, most of the time, the lead developer for Solera Autodata and, uh, in the Netherlands, this is. And um, they basically help uh, car dealers to buy, manage, and sell their cars as, um, as easy as possible. To give you an idea, we have about 3,000 car dealers in the system uh, that translate to about 12,000 users. There's currently 200,000 cars um, online for sale, uh, which then again translates into about 4 million advertisements. So from our system, you press one button and it's distributed to all the port sites automatically. We send about uh, 400,000 um, updates, so uh, daily to all these port sites. Uh, been keeping me busy. <clears throat> uh, as you can hear by now, I'm not from Liverpool. Originally, uh, my clients are from Holland, but I'm from Belgium. I lived in Turkey for about uh, four years, and since one and a half years, I live in Liverpool with my, uh, my beautiful wife, and uh, she's from Liverpool, so now I can say, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> I am proper buzzing when I take out the purple bin on a Wednesday. <laughs> I never told him that. <laughs> because so many people struggle with my name and Belgian beer, for that matter. Uh, today I'm going to be Alan. Uh, Alan is a, a P2P programmer and uh, he's a lot of fun to uh, be around with. Uh, he loves the quirkiness of the language. He uh, thinks out of the box all the time. Uh, and he's always up for a challenge, although his teammates might say that he's more the challenge eh, than, uh, than the language. Um, who of you is a bit like Alan? Or is she, you have a friend like Alan? Yeah, probably. So what Alan is going to happen to Alan today is based on a true story, although slightly more uh, dramatized. And I also want to make clear that uh, this is not a rant about my clients. So we love our clients, of course. So um, Alan is asked to uh, to build something. So um, Alan. Imagine that we have a user, he puts in a life plate and a mileage, and then we want to retrieve the current trading price from this car, uh, but from an external data service. Alan thinks, <clears throat> can be that hard, right? We use the CURL, we do a REST call to the external service, we get the response, we store the database, job done, right? Super easy, happy days. Also, eh? it's comes. Um, Client that says, well, okay, so this, this went well, so could you also uh, request another uh, external data service and this time check if the mileage is correct? He says, yeah, sure, can do. Hold my beer, right? Rest call, number one, stored in the database. Then uh, when that's done, we get the other one, stored in the data database. All good. It takes a bit longer, but, ah, you know, perfect, right? Now the client says, well, you know, could you also send get me the damage report or the maintenance report, all from external APIs? All right, Alan continues, but now he's getting a bit worried and he's starting to talk to his friends and say, oh, I think I might need a little help here. So I think I want a team and get this done. So the team joins in and uh, starts listening to, uh, to our client. The client says, well, okay, we got the car now in our system, we got all the vehicle options. 
all the technical information, we got all that, but we're really going to try to sell ads here. So they have to be able to upload a few pictures, 20, 30 pictures a car, right? No big, no biggie. So um, can you do that for us? Well, yeah, we start thinking, well, you know, you move upload the file, you know, we can, we can put the file anywhere you want, the file put content, and then we file get the, oh my God. Have they just uploaded 80 million photos already? And all these five thumbnails that I have to store is now multiplying 27 terabytes away. 80 million pictures, so how many cars are we talking about? We're talking about 12 million cars now. And then all this data, the vehicle options, the, the, the advertisement data, everything is now across 400 tables in a database of 2.6 terabyte. This is, this is, this is crazy. I mean, this, how can this be fast, right? Well, according to my SQL, we do get a few things done, but around four o'clock in the afternoon, when everybody wants to use it, we're, we're now three and a half seconds for one request. This is, um, yeah, this is not going the right way. So, time to make a phone call. But who are we gonna call? Hosting company, let's call the hosting company, right? <laughs> so, um, hosting company, what should we do? Just add more RAM. Yeah, I didn't think of that. More RAM, of course, from the soft. You know what, let's add more than enough RAM, right? So we can crack on, you know, let the client, eh? Ask us what they want, right? So, um, client is back. Alan, can we export the data? You know, we all love Excel, right? Um, but we have something in mind. What about a report builder? Something where, you know, they can select whatever data they want. Eh? The calls, you know, uh, the values and so, and then they export it. Yeah, pretty cool. But wait a minute, so if one, dealer could have about a thousand cars and there was 12 million in there which theoretically could all be eh, downloaded now what what uh, well, all these columns we have as well what would be my 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 limit like in, in terms of i don't know maybe my uh my scroll uh oh this is the uh all right it doesn't matter <laughs> I'll, I'll get back to it in a minute so uh yeah what about all these eh, what memory would i need or, or or how long would the script run right so and then the client goes back out and can you send those reports every Monday morning automatically, right? Just 3,000 dealers now, 3,000 reports. Yeah, well, I know how to do that, you know, with a, with a Chrome job or something, I can, I can do that. But I'm still a bit worried. All right, Alan, one more thing. The Christmas backgrounds are ready. The what? <laughs> you ask? Yeah, the Christmas backgrounds. We all know that uh, Christmas is our most uh, famous time of the year. This is when we take out all the backgrounds from the image automatically, and then we replace them with a Christmas background. <laughs> you know, I know, I know it's a time of the year that you want to take time off, but it's our the most wonderful time of the year, right? <clears throat> then the client asks, can you add a giraffe? <laughs> so you go like what? You know? The client says a giraffe. And then I think, <laughs> and in the car, I think I can, you know, but I'm still worried about that limit, because remember the phone job I just talked to you about, uh, it's 3,000 reports, and then we don't know how much. All right, I think I had enough of this. <laughs> <laughs> I hate my job. I hate it. It's just, they just ask too much, right? I'm, I'm, and who, the f why even PHP? Who, who was a PHP developer here? Well, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> you told me into using PHP. The strict type, the strict type didn't matter, right? Yeah? The type in my ass. <laughs> you know what? PHP sucks. <laughs> I'll say it again. PHP sucks. All right? Or oh, does it? <laughs> We've been um, luckily in the community. We have PHP seven quite recently. Uh, it's a bit of a new eh, wind, and CPUs have never been this fast. So uh, calculations are fast. You know, our code runs as fast as it can. 
So what is really going on? What are we trying to do here? Well, we're reading a lot from disk, we're writing it to disk, that disk might be somewhere in the network, local network. We're always access, accessing sorry, a database, um, which is in memory, somewhere on the disk, somewhere on the network. And whenever we do a REST call, well, it's not really a problem, is it? Because it's somebody else's problem. But he's storing it also somewhere on a disk. Eh? And, uh, and it's all over the uh, internet. So input-output operations are everywhere. Just missed the slide. But same thing here. Input-output is slow. This is a little um, thing everybody should know, the latency numbers from the local, from the in-memory cache, the fast cache there is, all the way to, uh, to sending a package over the internet. It's still in nanoseconds, but it does add up. So, this synchronous flow that we had before, is what we really want is an asynchronous flow. We just want things to run at the same time, if possible. When you start worrying about these things, you hear terms like non-blocking I.O., asynchronous, parallel, concurrency, event-driven. They're all related, it's similar, but it's different still. And it sounds cool, but it also sounds complicated. Because all I want to do is basically start these what we call I.O. operations right? at the same time. Uh, be notified that something happens, react to it, and don't waste time waiting. This is where React PHP comes in. What is React PHP not? React PHP is not black magic or voodoo. It's not a framework. It's basically a set of libraries. You can use whatever you want from it. It doesn't force you to do anything, and it's not the new bus. It's been around for a while. It's 100% pure PHP, has no extensions, and therefore no magic. All you gotta do is use Composer, install it, and you can start writing today whatever you want. So the same problems we had before, where we now say eh, we want asynchronous. This is uh, an example of what the code then looks like. Um, I'm not going to explain the loop right now, but basically the loop is like an event loop. It's basically uh, uh, always checking, eh, or make, you, you basically let the loop know uh, 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 you know what what to do, and uh, the promise will basically uh, make sure that. That when it's available, it will continue. So the loop is never blocked, and uh, this way can run forever. But in this case, uh, we asked it to, after uh, 0.5 seconds, to echo uh, world, and after 0.3 seconds, hello. So how long is this script going to run? Exactly. So 0.5 uh, seconds. So. Uh, it's, it's, it doesn't matter in which order they are and stuff, so basically they both uh, happen uh, at the same time or started at the same time and executed uh, when it's right. So React PHP has uh, timers, for example. You could use these timers, for example, to replace your Chrome. So a Chrome runs only after one minute. Maximum, you don't really know <coughs> is my Chrome running long enough or not long enough and, and stuff like that. So very easily you could work with people with timers. Uh, replace Chrome with this. What else can we replace? Well, CURL. Uh, we have a nice library uh, called Buzz. So, who's buzzing now eh? in Liverpool? Um, we, uh, so, whenever you want to retrieve uh, your external uh, data, uh, when the data is there, that's when, when you use it. In the meantime, your P3 script is running and doing anything else, anything else we tell it to do. Um, same for files, get, get the file when I have the file, so I'm not waiting for the file to come in, I'm still waiting technically, but I can do something else in the meantime, so I, I do wait a lot of time. When the file is there, then I can use it. Problem with big files, it's still possible because then you gotta get everything in memory, you don't want that, so you wanna think in chunks, eh? just like you download a big file, eh? it's, a, it's a chunks. So for example, a large CSV file, uh, we have records for this, where uh, you can basically say on data. So as soon as it nicely splits the chunks into the actual CSV row, so every row, it's a bit like a for each, yeah? um, uh, you can think of it like that. 
where basically every row is um, <coughs> when when it's there, you can you can start using it, and on end when the whole file is read, then um, then you get that uh, event as well. Yeah. Does that reduce the amount of memory? Absolutely. Taking that file away, like, it's just down. Absolutely, it's absolutely. Down. It is the chunk size, so uh, there's no there's <coughs> not loading any memory, and uh, you can do this with any uh, stream. So so basically, this is what we already what we start calling the streaming from now on. But you can have uh, also something that is never ending. It doesn't have to be a, a closed file, of course. It can be standard input, standard output. So it's constantly uh, listening. And then this, for example, here, we just we, uh, refine our out stream and we have in stream. And then when we receive in stream, we do whatever we want with it and then write it to the out stream. So we just pass things on. I also have a nice slide at the end uh, where you can, for example, start piping things then. You can then say, like, uh, when I have this data, then do this, then do this, this. So instead of this uh, then we saw, which is known by JavaScript people uh, more, uh, callbacks basically, um, uh, and, and uh, yeah, the promises, promises. Uh, this is less familiar in PHP, but uh, yeah, definitely not a problem. And this is very recently uh, something that I sponsored, which I saw as a big issue, that uh, the database was still, uh, well, it, it, it was over the network, but, um, uh, so it wasn't PDO or anything, but the size was a problem. So in my case, I don't know how many rows I'm gonna have to fetch. So how much memory do I allocate for my, for my script? Uh, in this case, it doesn't matter anymore. It creates the connection when I need it, uh, and my query result is a stream. So as soon as I retrieve the first row from, from the database, I can start processing it. That's a huge difference um, because um, normally MySQL has lots of different states. So first it's analyzing your query. Um, uh, it will. It depends if you use group by, order by, uh, whatever you do. And when it is ready to start sending you data, that's when it starts sending data. But in PHP, it will take until everything is in before actually PHP can start using it. Now, from the first row, basically, it uh, it's usable. And again, stream, think stream. So start. You can pass it on. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, and. Also, to show that uh, React HTTP is very uh, versatile, uh, the entire HTTP server, now we have Apache Nginx with FPM, and so you can basically ditch that if you're serving PHP or, or anything. Uh, every request that comes in, you could uh, also uh, react to it and uh, send it the right response, so the entire HTTP server is also built. Actually, there's a whole ecosystem uh, for this, so we, um, yeah, as you can see, there's, um, so of course there's file, but we also do cache, we have man cache Redis, and all, all uh, most sockets um, and protocols are supported. Pop sock is always, is also there, it all relates a lot to streaming and, and, and this as well. Um, and uh, yeah, so event source was so recently added some service side events, so don't think of PHP anymore as, um, yeah, I come, I come to a browser, uh, I put in uh, a request, and now I'm spinning up a, a process, and when it's done, it gives it back, and that's it. That's all PHP can do. That's not what all PHP can do. Does that mean I can't use it in existing applications? Because now we're talking something completely different. Absolutely not. You can use it already, anytime. A simple PHP script doesn't have to run all the time. As soon as you say, I'm done, you say, loop end, and you're done. So this, this uh, simply um, works anywhere. We did this uh, in our code, and so far only for about 10%, especially with, with batch processing and all these things, and we have a lot more stable uh, response. Still, PHP, of course, does take a bit of time, um, but overall, the, the performance is a lot better, uh, and customers are now very happy. You always have to wait for the, the one thing that takes the longest, uh, the one who's asleep, or in this case, Alan. Um, yeah, there's nothing there's nothing you can do about that. So when you run things asynchronously, uh, the, the 0.5 in the previous example is the slowest one, so that's how long it's gonna take. So it's not 
match it uh, in that perspective either. Uh, but I think you get the point. So does that mean, oh yeah, so, so quickly, uh, PHP then is then faster than what you probably thought and more versatile than you probably thought. Uh, React PHP is a uh, real deal here to stay, it's stable and production ready, we use it and we find it uh, awesome. And does this now mean that I can make my website a thousand times faster? Uh, yes, you can, but you might be missing the point. Always think when I have to wait, is there something that I'm doing in my code where I'm actually accessing the network or the file system or anything else and I have to wait? This is when you should start thinking React PHP and try it. And if you want to try it, uh, all the documentation is on the website, reactphp.org. We have Twitter, GitHub, ReactPHP uh, to follow. And uh, lots of new development is going on. There's some talks and blogs available online and also nice videos from uh, Fran Sergei. So, um, yeah, that's it. Thank you.